Hello, everybody, uh, and welcome to ARDD. Uh, so today uh, is our usual Monday meeting. Uh, as you know, ARDD is 100% uh, volunteer run. Uh, it's, uh, it lives thanks to uh, the sponsorships uh, that companies provide uh, every year. Uh, but us, we are working on volunteer basis. Uh, the um, executive uh, uh, chair of the conference is Morten Scheibe Knutsen, MD, PhD. Uh, he organizes this conference together with uh, Professor Daniela Bakula. Uh, both of them are from the University of Copenhagen. Uh, and uh, we also have uh, Evelyn Biskup, uh, Dr. Evelyn Biskup, who is organizing the longevity medicine track dedicated to physicians. Uh, I am uh, sponsoring and supporting the conference, also promoting it. Um, and today we have a wonderful opportunity to discuss uh, the meeting report from ARDD 2023. Uh, that was our 10th uh, um, ARDD. Uh, at the wonderful University of Copenhagen. Uh, and we're gonna talk about the paper, uh, promote it and explain uh, uh, the most recent trends. So let me share the screen, but uh, I would like uh, to pass the word to Morten Scheibe Knudsen uh, to uh, talk about uh, how this paper uh, originated. Yeah, thank you so much. So uh, I'm really happy that uh, this paper came out. It's uh... You know, huge amount of work compiling uh, what happens during uh, ARDD and uh, ARDD 10 was was the largest one we had uh, so far that year. It all, of course got uh, larger uh, at ARDD 11, um, but we're, I'm extremely happy that that this paper came out and and it's really uh, also volunteer based. It's uh, three participants at the at the meeting that that took up the huge challenge of compiling these uh, 100 uh, speakers uh, into a paper that's uh, that's uh, really nice and uh, manage manageable you know um and really condenses the um i think the field uh, that we have right now so extremely happy that, that this uh, came out and of course also very happy um for the the co-authors on the paper and the the people participating in the uh, in the uh, organization of ARDD uh, as well. Um, so maybe we should um, go to Eva to talk a little bit about um, one of the I think more exciting um, aspects of ARDD, which is the the clinical transition that we're seeing in the field. So much. Uh, it's a great honor and pleasure to be involved, and very grateful to the organizers and chairs of of ARDD that have implemented Longevity Medicine first workshop, then Longevity Medicine Day, and recently also Longevity Medicine Track to to the program. As clinical longevity medicine is growing, as the field is expanding, not only to translation of geroscience to clinical practice in individuals, but really also into hospitals, into clinical settings at a larger scale, and even to public health domains, it was really a great addition and very well percepted also from, from the participants. So our day was focusing on the clinical applications, on the current recommendations, potentially further also standards and guidelines, and of course, uh, giving a platform, not only a frontal lecture, but really giving a platform for all of those physicians, healthcare professionals, public health figures, health insurance representatives, and also pharma representatives who are always joining the, the day or now also the track with great interest. And in ARDD 2023, we had wonderful uh, representatives, not only from clinical settings, great figures, uh, Professor Barzilai, Professor Tom Randall, Professor Kirkland, but also representatives from a cross section that is so crucial for us physicians to practice. For example, uh, Dr. Uh, Michael Ringel, who is very much focused on medical economy, things that we need in order to further implement the tools into the clinical practice. But I will leave the details of the compilation of the talks that happened on Longevity Medicine Days 2023 to Dominica, who, who helped with the great team of volunteers to really compile it together. 
Thank you so much, Dr. Evelyn. And then I will uh, share my screen so that we can all follow the same track. And yes, the first I wanted to highlight, just like Alex uh, Morton and Evelyn mentioned before, huge shout out definitely to Professor Yushu Liu, Professor Chiang Fu, uh, and uh, Albert Ying, both all of them and uh, and all the team put a lot of effort into uh, into writing this paper because the process how we approached it is we watched every single talk that it was recorded, trans uh, watched read the transcripts, and highlighted the quintessence of every single talk. And as Alex mentioned, 126 speakers, this was comprehensive work. However, that was the work that just gave uh, unprecedented knowledge on the latest advancements in the field. So we have people who are affiliated with every single part of the world. And right now let's go through the overview of the process. So uh, so we started with AI in aging research because we agreed that this is the most disruptive technology that allows for such wide data analysis that was uh, not attainable before. So we divided the text by uh, by focusing on AI-driven biomarkers of aging. And recently the, the conference of uh, biomarkers of aging held at Harvard uh, also gathered speakers who are uh, co-authors on this paper. So highly recommend to check it out. Uh, one thing to very importantly notice is that each of the references that you can see here, these are not just random references to literature. Each and single one of them is uh, authored, co-authored by one of the uh, people who are in the consortium here who have co-authored the paper. So it's all from ARDD. So every single reference is ARDD linked. So from AI-driven biomarker discovery, we went into AI in drug discovery and longevity science. And so this paper, it was uh, originally submitted in March, so it did not include some of the latest highlights in AI drug discovery, such as in silicos uh, completing the phase 2A study for IPF. So as you can see, fields is changing extremely rapidly. That's why we need the paper for 2024 analysis of ARDD. However, before that is coming, we can see that uh, we also included the timeline of uh, how uh, longevity biotechnology has been changing in the last 10 years. You can see a lot of points here, and I'm sure that in the next review, a lot more will be added. Uh, because this is uh, such a disruptive field that uh, every single day published uh, papers just <laughs> expand our views on what is happening. So then continuing with AI, of course, we focused on aging clocks and deep aging clocks, highlighting uh, methylation clocks from Steve Hovarth and, uh, and deep aging clocks uh, developed more recently, as well as other AI applications. And then uh, we agreed during our many meetings on how to make this paper not only a summary of ARDD, but actually a useful tool for everybody who wants to know more about aging research, about longevity biotechnology. We decided to divide the section into analyzing every hallmark of aging from the initial Lopez and Notin uh, hallmarks of aging paper and synthesize everything what was said during ARDD 2023 about this specific hallmark. So over the next pages, uh, I will not dive deeply into this, rather highlight the, the, the work that went into dividing that into every specific hallmark and again, shouting out to the authors for not only producing the massive amount of research behind that, but also, uh, but also making it uh, digestible for the, for the reader. And then moving forward, a very important part, just like F. Dr. Evelyn was mentioning, healthy aging and healthy longevity medicine, transition from sicker to health-oriented longevity medicine. That's the synthesis of the Longevity Medicine Day. So, uh, so everything focusing more on the clinical physician aspect uh, is also state-of-the-art for 2023 RTT. We highlighted the uh, the process of the patient who goes through the longevity medicine consultation. And then, uh, just like Dr. Evelyn was mentioning before, we highlighted how the economy of aging and more so, uh, political science, social policy is also changing with this 
research, because as we have to acknowledge, aging research is not happening in the vacuum, only in the lab, but its effects are visible not only in the uh, in the papers, but also in the clinic and then on the societal level. So I highly encourage everyone to take a look at this paper. It's available uh, on PubMed, on Aging US, and if you Google longevity biotechnology, at ARDD 2023, you for sure find this paper. So I'm personally very grateful for the opportunity to work on this. And I'm also very excited for the paper of ARDD 2024. Yeah, so here it's also very important uh, to acknowledge the contribution of Daniela Bakula, who uh, is the corresponding last author on this paper, um, and uh, who is uh, uh, co-chairing the ARDD. She is not uh, uh, here with us today, but uh, she usually helps uh, run this weekly meeting. Um, it's also very important to note that uh, ARDD usually takes uh, approximately uh, 54 to 56 weeks to prepare. Uh, so the uh, preparation starts uh, way before uh, this year's uh, conference begins. Uh, just to ensure that uh, uh, everybody gets uh, the complete ARD experience. Uh, it brings together um, scientists, high-profile academics uh, from all over the world uh, who now recognize the importance of this conference. It also um, brings together the pharmaceutical companies. Uh, so from, from the very inception, uh, the, conf the conference was designed to bring together uh, high-profile industry players, uh, mostly uh, big pharmaceutical companies and big biopharmaceutical companies, together with high-profile academics, and also attracts uh, multiple startups. Uh, so in 2024, more than 40 startups sponsored the conference, uh, and uh, many notable investors investing in longevity. Uh, some of them come to the conference for the first time uh, after reading conference reports. Uh, because uh, you know, aging will never get old uh, when it comes to investing. Um, when it gets old, we can all go home and uh, enjoy the world of abundance. Um, and uh, it also brings together the media uh, and the top uh, uh, academic um, uh, research um, editors. So the editors of top uh, highly ranked journals uh, would be present at the event. Uh, it's also very full of social activities. It's a, the only um, event of this size, scale, and length. It takes the entire week. Uh, and uh, many com uh, companies and many uh, academics come even earlier for pre-conference or post-conference meetings. Uh, and uh, it also unites the industry. Um, many clinicians travel to the conference. So in 2025, uh, you should expect uh, a much broader and much uh, more vibrant experience because uh, the conference always steps up every year, um, especially with uh, more and more participation from big pharmaceutical companies that finally started adding aging research uh, into their corporate strategies. Um, so thank you very much for uh, looking at this paper and uh, please read it, share it, uh, tweet it, send it to your friends and invite them to ARDD 2025. So <laughs> please come Join to us. ARDD. Please. <laughs> That's the <laughs> ARDD sign. Um, <laughs> register. <laughs> um, and uh, this would not have been possible without the careful uh, support and guidance from uh, uh, Stephanie Tsang, uh, who is putting a lot of effort into this conference as well. Thanks so much. Thank you.